It's four o'clock in the afternoon, and you're sleeping. I've been thinking of myself as a little girl, remembering my mother, how much I loved her, how much I needed her. I want to be in your life, Emily. I want to hold your hand on your first day of school, like my mommy held mine, and cry at your wedding as daddy walks you down the aisle. I want to be your mother angel. More than anything, I want it to be me. But I won't be there, Emily. Who will be your mother when I'm gone? Yeah, yeah, just yesterday. Still some concerns for the reef. Yeah. Listen, I'm usually not the kind of guy that uh, comes on to women I don't know, but... You're not? No, I've been watching you. <laughs> and uh, I think, well, I think we would be great together. And why do you think that? It's hard to explain. Watching you walk across the room, it was like I could see our future. Okay, I'll bite. What do you see? We meet at a party. I like parties. Something clicks between us. We both feel it. A physical attraction? Oh, most definitely. We can't fight it. But then it turns into something serious very fast. How serious? Well, before either of us knows what's happening, we fly off to Key West for a romantic weekend. That has possibilities. Mm. We go deep sea fishing. Mm -mm. No, you'll never get me out there. Oh, no, it's not easy, but I talk you into it. You catch a marlin. 500 pounds. You see a 500-pound marlin in my future? That night we make love. And I propose. What do I say? Yes. Well, I've always dreamt of a traditional wedding. Get married on the beach. The band plays Jimmy Buffett all night long. Oh, no. A parrot head? Well, is that a deal breaker? I don't know. Do we live happily ever after? We have our hard times. But I think we're always there for each other. And one day, it happens. What? We have a little baby, and we become the happiest parents in the world. I have to think it over. No problem. You got five minutes. your Christmas party. Oh. After the wedding, my mom was so happy. I found her sitting on the beach by herself. I said, Mom, what are you doing? She said, waiting. I said, waiting for what? She said, to be a grandma. No, she would have been a terrific grandma. I oh, know. I really miss her. You okay? Yeah. Yeah. 
I just, I just want everything to be perfect. Ellen, I don't usually allow myself to get too philosophical, but I'm going to make an exception in your case. Don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> it's very profound, Brian. Oh, oh, you want profound. Okay. Well, in five months, we're going to have a beautiful little baby. I still can't believe it. I don't know if everything's going to be perfect. You don't? Well, perfect may be shooting a bit high. It is? A little. But I do know this. As long as we have each other, we will be okay. All right? So repeat after me. We're going to be okay. <laughs> uh, we will be okay. This is ruptured. A lot of blood pooling in the cervix. Is my baby going to be all right? I'm sorry, Ellen, but you might lose the baby. We've got to get it out right now. We're going to do an emergency C-section. Call the OR. Tell them we're on the way. Right. Mr. Suction? Yes, Doctor. Good. Where's the NICU? Retract. All right, we go. Okay, clamp. Clamp. And clamp. Doctor. Dr. Allen. Allen? She's hemorrhaging. Allen. Allen. Suction. Hi, off here. Stat. Mrs. Sponge. Allen. No. It's good. More suction. Doctor, blood pressure's dropping. Damn. Mr. Young, you have to leave now. Why? What's happening? Ellen? Ellen? Mr. Young, please. More sponges. Mr. Young. Tell me what's happening. We need blood down here. Mr. Young. Ellen! More sponges, more. Suction. She's still coming out of the anesthesia. Why don't you go see your daughter first? Well, she's in the neonatal intensive care unit at the end of the hall. They're waiting for you there. By the time you met her and uh, said hello, Helen should be more alert. My daughter? Yeah. Mr. 
Mr. Young? I'm Claire Hutton. I assisted in your daughter's delivery. We're ready for you. Is she okay? She's in serious condition, but she's stable. She's only 23 weeks gestation. We'll be with her 24 hours a day until she's out of danger. We'll monitor her meds, manage her oxygen, make sure she knows we're here for her. Well, we may need a nurse, too. And that's okay. We also take care of parents. How you doing? I'm really sore. My back hurts. Well, tell the doctor. Well, what's he gonna say? Your back hurts because you had major surgery and almost died. But you didn't. I know. I know. I'm very much alive. And so is your daughter. Come on, Brian. I, I just don't feel well. Maybe tomorrow would be better. Nope. Today is the day, Mrs. Young. It's time for you to meet Miss Emily Rose. Let's go. Okay. Hi. Thank you. Oh, okay. Hello, Emily. You're being such a good girl today. Hey, Claire? Hey. Honey, I'm gonna go scrub up. I'll be right back, okay? Okay. I'm Claire Hutton, Emily's primary nurse. Ellen. You have a beautiful little girl, Ellen. Are you ready to meet her? She's 12 inches long, and she weighs one pound, two ounces. Okay, I've seen her. Wait. No, I, I, I can't do this. I understand. I'm, af I'm afraid. It's normal to be afraid. I, I keep asking myself, um, why don't I want to see my baby? Emily's so small, it's hard to believe she's alive. You're afraid to see her because you're afraid she won't survive. Yeah. More than anything, love makes babies grow. Makes them eat without intravenous tubes. Makes them breathe without respirators. Love makes them live. Daddy and Daddy's here. Everything's gonna be okay. Daddy loves you, Emily Rose. Daddy loves you so much. It's called patterning. Finding something you do that connects you to the baby. Brian strokes Emily's cheek with his thumb. I just didn't think it would be like this. She's still a fetus, Ellen. Extensively premature. Her lungs don't work. She's too young to eat. She's struggling to live. And she needs her mother. You need her too. What do I do? She knows your voice. And then I see you. She heard it all the time she was inside you. Yes. Let her know that you're still here for her.
And I don't want to hurt her. You won't. is too low. Yeah, because you want to get 360. Well, you're going to get 360. Yeah, you, you know that corner house on Montclair? Just sold for 360.25. Just happened. Because I sold it. Thank you. All right, well, well, just call me after you talk to them. Okay. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's a little too soon to tell. Yeah, we just don't know yet. Lung sacs are similar to rubber balloons. With each breath, Emily needs to blow the balloon up. It's exhausting, and she can't do it. Ventilator he helps keep her lungs open and delivers oxygen with each breath. As Emily grows, her lungs develop their own surface tension to stay open. Then all she has to do is take in the oxygen, use it, and exchange it. Are you sure she's ready? The longer Emmy depends on the machine, the greater risk of damage there is to her lungs. She already has some scarring. Eventually, new lung tissue will overcompensate for the damaged tissue, but we do need to try to get her off the ventilator. so stubborn, Emmy. She's breathing on her own. She sure is. Make sure she sets above 95. Time to feed her. How's she doing? Hmm. I could just sit and stare at her all day. She's really breathing. I knew she would. She's a fighter. Yeah, just like her mom. I had cancer when I was 17. Hodgkin's disease. But I beat that. And then when I was 23, I got cancer again. This time in my neck. That was hard. I beat that, too. Oh, God, that's awful. I'm so sorry. No, don't be. You know, we all have hard times, Claire. That's life. So what about you? What's your story? Oh, come on. We see each other for almost 12 hours every day. I'm going to be here for months. You can tell me. Oh, I can? Of course. Married? Divorced. Two years. Mm. Divorced, two years. And, uh... And it was a bad marriage. Mm. Look, my parents have been married for 38 years. 
They still live in the house in Ohio where I was born. They still hold hands. I wanted to be married to the same man forever. I wanted him to believe in the same things I did. Love, marriage. Hmm. Yeah, I know that man. I married him. You're lucky. I know. So are you dating? No. Well, what are you waiting for? It's been two years. Well, I don't have any time right now. I love being with my girls. I'm very happy with the way things are. Huh. Doesn't exactly sound convincing. Oh, yeah, which part? The, uh, I'm happy with the way things are part. Okay, I'll work on that. Is that what you're warning to the hospital? Mom, do you really think Emmy's gonna notice? No, but Ellen will, and so will I. I heard the phone ringing when I was in the shower. Who answered it? Me. You really like Ellen, don't you? She's got a lot of energy. You'll see. Who called? Pete. His name's not Pete. She does real estate, right? Manages her office, does her own deals, comes to the hospital to be with Emmy. She's got a million things going on at the same time, and she does them all great. You know, I'm lucky to get dinner on the table. Tell me about it. What did he say, Sam? Just that he'd call back. That's about it. Did he say when he'd call back? It was Pete, Mom. He didn't say anything. His name's not Pete, it's Dad. <sighs> Maybe he's in town. Maybe he wants to see us. What's the point, Lindsay? The point is he's our father. He's not my father. Yes, he is. No, he isn't. Yes, he is. No, he isn't. Mom. That's enough, both of you, please. never did this before, bringing home pictures, bringing us to the hospital. This one smiles at me. Mom, smiling's a learned behavior. You should know that. What I mean is that she wants to live so badly, she tells me that all day long. She's got a lot of heart for such a tiny person. There's something special about her. That's why I want you to meet her. Come on, I told Ellen we'd be there at 9. I don't want to be late. She's going to be OK, right? I'll feel better when she's eating on her own. These are my daughters, Emmy. This is Lindsay and Samantha. Hi, Emmy. Hi, Emily. I wanted them to meet you now that you've gotten so big. I want them to meet your mommy, too. I told them how special you both were. Emmy, you have to learn how to eat on your own. Come on. She's 34 weeks, Alan. She'll learn. Here. Try this. Oh. Relax. Come on. I was glad I got to meet your girls. They were glad to meet you, too. And Emmy. Hmm. I believe how grown up they are. Oh, it happened so fast. I remember when they were babies. Now they can go down to the cafeteria alone for lunch. Mm -hmm. Boyfriends just around the corner. Don't remind me. They're good girls, Claire. You're doing a great job. Thanks. Come on, Emmy. You really have to do this, honey. Come on. What do we do if she doesn't get it? Well, we'll continue with the two feedings. There could be some complications, but I'm sure that we'll find a way. Hey, look. Oh, I think she's doing it. She's eating. Oh, she's doing it. She's got it. Oh, oh Emily. Girl. <laughs> that was so good. Yes.
done this without you, Claire. I'm gonna miss you, Emily. I'm gonna miss all of you. This is really hard for me. What are you talking about? You see us. Yeah. Day off's Tuesday, right? Right. All right, then. We'll see you Tuesday. Good. This is a fine-looking sandwich. We, <laughs> we have enough mustard, don't you? Oh. <laughs> mm, we're not the sandwich, sweetie. You don't get the mustard on us. Hi. Hi. Oh, she thought we were the sandwich. I see. Come in. Can you, uh... Oh, yeah, sure. Hey, sweetie. Hi. <laughs> Babysitter called in sick. Ellen is uh, in a meeting she can't get out of. She should be home any minute. Oh, well, that's a nice surprise. I haven't seen you for a while. Did you eat lunch? No, I came straight from the gym. I didn't have time. Ah, the gym. Yes, I remember working out. It's very hazy. Feels good, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to make you a sandwich. Oh, no, Brian, you don't have to. No, I want to. All right, we got the bread, the cheese, the ham, uh, the... Mustard, of course. No, I won't take no for an answer. Now, you guys have got this Tuesday thing down. Uh, it was Ellen's idea. What was Ellen's idea? To meet the same day every week. Ah, uh, well, you know, that way everything is organized and finalized. Yeah, she has pretty well organized and finalized my entire life. Yeah, I'm glad of it. If she were to ever leave me, I would be sitting on the beach drinking margaritas, listening to Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett. What's wrong with Jimmy Buffett? There is nothing wrong with Jimmy Buffett. Yeah, right. Fins to the left, fins to the right. <laughs> okay, hi, sweetheart. Oh, I think we better get you a new shirt. I thought you were a sandwich, didn't he? Oh, 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 oh. 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 Wait, I got her, I got her. Oh, I got her. Okay. Look, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, I know you don't want to hear it. I'm okay. This is not what I would call okay. Now, somebody has got to look at your back. Brian, I just had a C-section, and then I was in bed for four weeks. You know, then I, I, I go to pick up the baby, but I can't hold her right because I'm overcompensating. It is normal to have back pain. Ask Claire. She's a nurse. I think you should go see a doctor. <sighs> She's an NICU nurse. What does she know about back pain? Uh, it's not funny anymore, Ellen. Now, come on, it could be a slip disc, a pinched nerve. <sighs> Okay, okay, okay. I'll go to the doctor. I promise. When? I don't know. I gotta check my schedule. Come on, baby girl. Don't worry, Brian. That's a good girl. Yes. He was a bartender in Miami, pretty much living on the beach. I was down there on vacation. I'd won this uh, trip through my office. There we go, Angel. Whoa. I sat down to the bar. He made me a drink. Then he followed me all the way back to Minneapolis. So it was love at first sight. Well, opposites attract. He's from Florida. I'm from Minnesota. He's a parrot head. I love jazz. Actually, the only thing we had in common was that we wanted to spend the rest of our lives together. How old were you? I was 32 when we got married. The kitchen is the most important room of the house. If the wife can't see herself making Thanksgiving dinner, you haven't got a chance. How old were you when you got married? 18. Pete was 19. I got married right out of high school. Had Samantha a year later. Pete was driving a truck, hanging out with his friends while I was in nursing school, waiting tables and taking care of Sam. Huh. Save the laundry room for last. No matter how nice it is, nobody likes to see themselves washing clothes. You guys were young. Too young. We never really even knew each other. Ah. 
Christmas Eve. All the relatives are visiting. Fire burning in the fireplace. Presents under the tree in the corner. And an upright piano where Grandma is sitting, bombed out of her mind on eggnog, singing Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> over and over again until her face would just pass out on the keyboard. This is a true story. And then you would go over, touch her arm, she would pop up, and start singing right where she left off. I swear to God. <laughs> and then my dad and I, we'd get her upstairs, we'd put her to bed, and he'd say to me, look, we love her anyway. She's family, that's all that matters. My dad taught me the same thing. I think that's why I held on to my marriage for so long. We should get our dads together someday, I bet they'd be friends. Mm. My dad died when I was 21. My mom died four years ago. She was the smartest, most beautiful woman I'd ever met. Mm. Just hope I can be for Emmy what she was for me. You will be. Come on. Do you remember turning it wrong or wrenching it somehow? I, I twisted it funny, um, lifting a file box at the office mm -hmm. when I was pregnant. And then, you know, I had surgery when I gave birth to my daughter. A high percentage of the population experiences back pain. Most of them feel it where you do, the lumbar area. That's a lower back. Typically, it's a result of some kind of muscular trauma. Like lifting a file box and wrenching it? Yes. Or like major surgery? Certainly possible. Yeah, so just a bad back. Now, I can't feel anything unusual, but we'll take some x-rays, and that'll give us a more detailed picture. <laughs> okay, if you can put your neck up here for me. All right, push it forward. There we go. Okay, take a nice deep breath and hold it. Hold it. I hope worst case, I just have to get off my feet for a couple of weeks. I've done that before. I can work, even if I'm on my back. <laughs> You've got to slow down. Helen, come on. Honey, you wouldn't even recognize me if I slew now. You'd say, where's that Ellen I fell in love with? Where's the Ellen who swept me off my feet? I'm sorry I took so long. I wanted Dr. Alexander to look at the film with me. There's a mass on the left lung and on the ribs right beneath it. It's cancer, Ellen. It's come back. Dr. Gordon, he told me your needle biopsy was malignant and that you had surgery. Yeah, they, uh, they removed parts of two of my ribs and lower section of my lungs. Dr. Gordon said that the tumor looked very angry. We'll wait and see. Yeah, just waiting on the pathology report. Hi, the girls. I don't want to talk about the girls. I want to talk about you. I'm so sick of talking about me. Oh, come in. I'll come back. Oh, Claire, please, stay. Ellen, the tumor that started in your lung has metastasized to the bone, to the ninth and tenth ribs. You took it out, right? 
as much as I could. But when it moves to the bone like that, it means that the cancer is in its end stage. Ellen, there's nothing we can do. Well, what's that supposed to mean? I mean, what about chemotherapy? It's too late. What about radiation? It won't help. What do you mean it won't help? At this advanced stage, there's less than a 1% chance of survival. You have six months, maybe less. I'm very sorry, Helen. said it was very unusual to have three separate cancers in one lifetime. I said, well, I'm a very unusual person. Actually, uh, the reason they think I got this cancer is the same reason I got the cancer in my neck. That high dose of radiation from when I had Hodgkin's when I was 17. Yep, yeah. so I got this. Now it's a level considered unnecessary. Can you believe that? I wouldn't believe any of it. Mom, it's just another challenge, and we're going to deal with it. That's right. Some people with this kind of cancer at this stage of development survive. Now, why can't that be Ellen? She did it before, and she will do it again. She's going to beat this. And marry this great guy and have this incredible baby just to check out. We found another doctor, a lung cancer specialist. He's going to do the radiation for us. Now, there's special diets, alternative medicines. A healthy, positive mind secures a body for a long life, right? Or something like that. I'm not an expert in Eastern mind-body theory, but... <laughs> not yet. Okay. We're going to fight this, right? Okay. Here we go, Angel. Here we go. Smile. Beets, celery, apples, vitamins, selenium, enzymes, uh, sea cucumbers, barley grass, wheat, kelp, and cooked brown rice. Mm. I ordered a pizza and a beer. Drink. Hmm. Yeah. That's disgusting. Antioxidants and natural foods build the immune system. Yeah, if they don't kill you first. Mm. Well, I could put some Bosco in there. Oh. Can I just have the Bosco straight up? How are you doing? I'm okay. Really? Yeah. Now, can I have a beer? <sighs> She's the most adorable baby, isn't she? Sometimes I look at her and I, I just don't know who she looks like. Who do you think? Well, I'd have to say that she looks like you. A little like your mom. Mm. You know, when I was little, my mom used to take me to this park right next to our house. Mm -hmm. We'd have a picnic lunch and she'd tell me jokes and stories. Just me and my mom. And then there was this swing right in the middle of a field. And after lunch, I'd, I'd go and I'd get on the swing, and she'd push me, and she'd push me. And I'd, I'd try to get my feet to touch the clouds. <laughs> we really laughed hard. <sighs> Whew, I tell you, I, I just can't remember a time when I, I felt so happy, just so loved. Yeah. <laughs> 
Plenty of picnics. Oh, I know, I know that. I, I know. I just, um, you know, my mom was always there for me. Hey, you are always going to be there for Emmy. Now, come on. <laughs> yeah. I should make you drink this. <laughs> mm. Mm. She likes when we do that. So do I. Uh. Um, you know, Claire gave me the name of, of this therapist. Her name is uh, Sandy Russo. And, um, I, I want to go talk to her. All right. You think you have to? <sighs> so, uh, do you think there's an afterlife? I like to believe that whatever makes us alive continues to exist when we leave this life. My parents believed in heaven. I guess I do too. Do you think I'm gonna die? Do you? I think I might. What if I do? Who's going to take care of Emmy? What's going to happen to Brian? Leaving them alone, it's very hard to accept that thought, I know. No, I can't even think of them without me. Can you picture Brian marrying again? Or Emmy with the mother? Sometimes, if you're able to imagine this thought, you can see them as being all right if you die. I can't do that. I, I can't do that. Well, wouldn't you want Brian to think that you and Emmy would be all right if the situation were reversed? Well, if the situation were reversed, I'd probably lock myself in a closet and never come out. Oh, Sandy, I... I just can't believe this is my life. I'm just not very good at facing the truth. Not many people are. I have this friend, Claire. She's the uh, NICU nurse I told you about. The one that took care of Emmy. She's unbelievable. Every day she faces those babies and their parents. She's totally there for them. And those babies could die at any time. She faces that truth every day. If it was me, I... Maybe it isn't the truth you have trouble facing. Maybe it's the emotion beneath the truth. Brian says I uh, keep myself busy so I don't have to do the things that I don't want to do. But maybe the truth is so I don't have to feel the things that I'm afraid to feel. You're a nurse. What if you sold shoes? You wouldn't know what to do on Tuesday. Oh. Okay, wait. Relax. Just breathe. Oh. Here. Here, put this back. Okay. I can deal with... I can deal with the tumors that are here. I, oh, I just don't know what to do with the tumors that are coming. I feel so cheated. It's just not fair. Not gonna know my daughter. She's never gonna know me. Just so angry. I I can't believe I'm gonna let her down. I I don't want her to think I just walked out on her. She won't. 
read this article. It said, children that lose their mothers at an early age never really get over this as adults. And they never get their mother's love and encouragement. She needs my advice. She needs to hear my stories. To know how I felt. Her first day of school. Her first date. Graduation. And she'll have a wedding. story put it into words tell her who you are and how you've lived in this world you can give her what she needs to go on without you I don't know what to say Alan you always know what to say <laughs> I know I do Take care of your dad, too. Yeah. Here, go see daddy. Go on. Daddy's home. Daddy's home. Hey, baby. Hey. Emmy, baby. Hi, honey. Oh, I've been thinking about you all day. Yeah, I couldn't wait to get home and see you and mommy. Huh? huh? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. said my parents dropped by today. Yeah, I missed them. I was sleep around three. Yeah. You said Dad mowed the lawn? Looked at your car a little bit. Mom cooked enough to last us a whole week. Pearl also said that you had a pretty bad day. Yeah. Had better. I'm sorry. Honey, what are you writing? Oh. A letter to Emily. Can I hear it? Sure. Dear Emily, it's four o'clock in the afternoon and you're sleeping. I've been thinking of myself as a little girl remembering my mother, how much I loved her, how much I needed her. I want to be in your life, Emmy. I want to hold your hand on your first day of school like my mom held mine and cry at your wedding as daddy walks you down the aisle. I want to be your mother, Angel. More than anything, I want it to be me. But I won't be there, Emmy. You will be. No. Ellen. I'm dying, Brian. You're giving up. I'm not. You have a responsibility to Emmy and to me. And to yourself. I have a responsibility to face the truth. And to do what's right for my family. Your family needs you. But you have to keep trying. I am. I'm just fighting a different battle. You want me to fight to live. I just want to get as much as I can out of the time I have left. Yeah, well, I thought we were supposed to spend the rest of our lives together. So did I. I love you. 
I know you do. At first, I didn't want you to love anyone else ever again. Didn't want Emmy to know another mother. She won't. No, that's wrong. It's selfish. And it is not what I really want for you or for her. I want you to get married again. I want you to have a family. I want Emmy to have a family. No, there isn't anyone else. Claire loves Emmy. Emmy loves Claire. And I've seen the two of you together. There's something there. I know there is. Oh, what are you talking about? I love you. I'll always love you. When I'm gone, call Claire. You'll see. No, no. I won't, honey. I can't. No. Is it helping? It's not the cancer that hurts. So I'm too sick to play with my baby. Give me pain medicine for that. It's hot. No spring this year, straight to summer. <laughs> Hi, mommy. Hi, girl. Hi, Claire. Hi, Emmy. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Sting. Hey. Your mother-in-law called while you were sleeping. She wants to know if you ate your soup for lunch. Okay. She says you have to eat so you can get strong again. She's in denial. <laughs> the whole family's in denial. Oh, they love you very much, Ellen. I think I'm gonna die, Pearl. I think so. If it were you, what would you do? <laughs> if it were me, Ellen? I think I'd already be dead. <laughs> Thank you. God, Ellen. I wish I could help you. I'm, I'm so sorry. You can't help me. Promise me that you'll be there for Emmy and Brian. They're gonna need you, Claire. See, you promise me that you'll be there for them. I will. The letters for Emmy. And one day she's gonna read them. But she's gonna need somebody to talk to. You'll be there. You talk to her. I want you to be there. I want you to live. I wish I could. I wish I could give you a piece of myself and make you well. Who's there for everyone else? But who's there for you? Ellen. I know you, Claire. You want to love someone again. And you want someone to love you. Don't give up. Just because you're afraid to take a chance. Thank you.
Right. You know, I, I made photo albums for Emmy. My life. Brian's life. Her life. I want her to be able to see me when she needs to. I'm sure it'll mean a lot to her one day. Does death hurt? I think it's dying that hurts. Ah. Oh. You know, I... I really miss my parents. I'm gonna tell them all about Emmy. I know they'll be happy to see you. Yeah, but you know... I don't know anyone my age who's died. They'll be my friends in heaven. Oh, my cousin Gary died in a car accident when he was 35. He'd love to have a good time. Look him up. He'll be your friend. <laughs> Her willpower is incredible. Was she? She's struggling. How are you? Um, I was just thinking about the day that Emmy was born. Ellen bleeding to death on one table, and Emmy fighting for her life on another. <laughs> My mind racing so fast, I thought I'd fall over. Exactly how I feel right now. Hmm. Hi, Ellen. How are you doing? I want to see Emmy. And, uh, turn off the drugs. I want to be here for this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got. Borrow your lipstick. isn't she?
think you better come now.
my baby bird. Tweet, tweet. I want to spread my wings and fly. Oh, look at this one, see? He's flapping his wings. But your wings need their rest. ready so where are you guys going I think I'll take her to the park she likes that yeah well okay she's ready for you hmm? I'm ready for her yeah. Yeah. All right. uh, oh, yeah. be a good girl for Claire she always is <laughs> yeah that's a good song this car for Ellen. It feels really weird selling it. She's been gone six months, son. You don't need two cars. Selling it, letting her go. Little by little, I'm afraid I'll lose her. You'll never lose her. She'll be part of you forever. How are you supposed to be unhappy, Brian? I mean, what's the time limit? Ten months? A year? A year and a half? You've been grieving a long time since the day they said that Ellen was going to die. You have to start your life again, son. Sooner or later. It's, uh, it's Brian. Yeah. Ellen managed to handle so much more than I even knew. I mean, we're doing okay. I, things get a little hectic, but... I have a sitter during the week, but we're pretty much on our own on the weekends. My parents help out a lot, though. They moved up here when Ellen was pregnant. She was sort of the daughter they never had. How are they doing? Better. What about you? Oh, I miss her. Mm. So do I. This was one of her favorite places. I know. She used to take me here for lunch. The first time we came here was right after we got married. There was this band she really wanted to see. We got here, the place was packed. So I tried to get us in, but it was no good. Uh, it was book solid. 
So I go outside and I say, no, there's no way. She said she wanted to try. <laughs> Did she get you in? We sat at that front table right there. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times she did stuff like that. She wanted me to call you. I mean, not just because of Emmy. I mean. Yeah, she wanted me to call you, too. Yeah. I guess she thought that maybe, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Look, we don't have to do this just because she wanted us to. No. No, we don't. I mean, you were more her friend than... I, I, even though I... You know what I'm saying? Yes. But Tuesdays are still good. Hmm? Yes. Maybe you could come with us sometime. I'm sure Emmy would love that. Yeah. Maybe I can. like this in Key West? Uh, alligator farms. Not as good. No petting. <laughs> Do you ever miss Florida? Sure. But I like Minneapolis. I moved my life here. This is where Ellen grew up. I'd like Emmy to grow up here, too. It's nice. So did you bring your daughters here when they were little? Mm, they loved it here. Yeah. Samantha and... Uh, and Lindsay. Lindsay. Yeah. Yeah, Ellen used to tell me about it once in a while. And they were both very mad at me today. They wanted to come see Emmy. Well, we should get them all together sometime. Yeah. Hmm? Only if it's on a Tuesday. Just kidding. You see the horsey? Come on. Oh. Look at that. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Kisses. A lot about you. I've heard a lot about you, too. Yeah? Well, hope you heard a few good things, huh? <laughs> a few. Good. Uh, um, can I take your uh, coat? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. Emmy. Emmy, this is Lindsay and Samantha. You met them once when you were a little girl. Thank you. Hi, we met you once when you were a little baby. We came to the hospital to see you. <laughs> is it your birthday today? Want to go see where the party is? Come on, let's go, let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Give me your hand. Let's go. Oh, let's go. <laughs> that wasn't so bad. They were nervous. Not as nervous as me. <laughs> so, please, go ahead. Wow. Mm. <laughs> We're not dating. Can I 
much every Tuesday since New Year's. I call that dating. We're friends, that's all. I've seen you together, Mom. You're way past friends. No, we're not. You finish each other's sentences, you laugh at the same jokes, you care about the same things. Don't you do that with all your close friends? Okay, so if you're such close friends and you already see each other every week, why don't you just start dating? Because I don't want to turn it into more than it is. Why not? Because he's Ellen's husband. Not anymore. Look, one day he's going to figure out that I'm not Ellen. I'm just the nurse who was there for him and Emmy when they were down. And in the end, I'll be the one who gets hurt. Again. I'm not going to let myself fall in love with him, Sam. I'm not. You've already fallen in love with him. He's still in love with Ellen. It's not going to happen, Sam. It's not. Hey, how about this one? Let's chop this old man down, drag him home, order a pizza. I don't know. I think it's too thin. It's not tall enough. It has to be perfect. Oh, man. Tough crowd, Emmy. <laughs> tough crowd. I can't eat pizza after this anyway, Brian. I'm going over to a friend's house. Oh, yeah? What are you going to do? Uh, hang out, listen to music. Jimmy Buffett? <laughs> not exactly. He's so old. He is not He's old. Definitely not old. Don't you like any of his songs? No. <laughs> None? Zero? <laughs> uh, one particular harbor? Last Mango in Paris. That's a song? Last Mango? In Paris. Uh, Jolly Mall. Uh, cheeseburger in Paradise. Margaritaville. Tell me you've heard of Margaritaville. Even if you haven't, tell me you've heard of Margaritaville. All right? Give me some faith in your generation. Margaritaville? That's Jimmy Buffett? Must be. I guess so. I can't go on. <laughs> we have time. We can teach them. There's a good one. Oh, where? <laughs> what was that? Well, I think it was a kiss. You know what I mean. I want to be more than just friends. I have too much baggage, Brian. No, I don't think so. We can't do it. We can try. Well, what if it doesn't work? I, I don't want the girls to get hurt, and I don't want to jeopardize my relationship with Emmy. Claire, I would never do anything to hurt your girls. And I would never do anything to stand between you and Emmy. Never. I promise. I want to be with you. I want us to be together. Did you ever come here for New Year's with Ellen? No, she wasn't a big fan of New Year's Eve. She didn't like the whole idea of time marching on. She wanted to freeze her life, keep everything just the way it was. Brian, I can't be her. I can't be Ellen. Claire, but she's gone. I don't need another Ellen. I need you. Thanks again, Brian. Well, you're welcome again. Good night. Good night. Can I come in? 
I don't have to. I want you to. Yeah, I mean, we, we can wait. I don't want to wait. I want you to be happy. You planned this, didn't you? Do you like what you see? What do you mean? I mean, you know, all of us together like this. You know I do. Before I loved you. I know. You loved Emmy. No, I loved Ellen. She wanted us to be together. You, me, the kids. All of us. She made something wonderful out of her death. She left something beautiful behind. She was so brave. <laughs> Brian, I can't replace Ellen, but I promise I will love Emmy. And I will always be there to tell her about her mother. I will always be there to say, oh, that look. You look just like her. Hey! 
Hey! Car's been here for 45 minutes. I've been dressed for two hours. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Emmy. Oh, is this what I have to look forward to? Got four women and me waiting? Hi, Daddy. Hi, Emmy. Come on, I gotta think we eloped. Hello? Anyone there? Hi, Daddy. Hi, Emmy. Come on in. How do we look, Daddy? <laughs> Beautiful. Dear Emily, I know that someone wonderful will be your mother. Someone who will take care of you and Daddy. Someone who will hold you and love you. And in her eyes, you'll see my love. You're going to have a beautiful life filled with laughter and love. You're going to be happy, Emmy. And that makes me happy. I know all of this is true, Angel. Because in my heart, I have faith in God's new plan. All my love, Mommy. <laughs>